Hi, hey, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I don't know what this voice is, but that is here now, okay? Okay, okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> why? Why am I me? I have two books I would like to talk to you about today. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to do like a quick, like, it's, it, I'm hoping it's going to be a quick one. Let's just say that. So I have two books. Might have seen that from, you know, the thumbnail. Anyway, um, so Winter and Summer Feels. So the first book I have is Upon a Frosted Star by M.A. Kusner. Kusner? Kusner. I think I said it right the first time. I don't know. Honestly, <sighs> mean words and names. We don't mix and match. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this is the same author that wrote Midnight in Everwood, which was a nutcracker retelling. Now this one is more of a Great Gatsby meets Swan Lake kind of a deal. I won't lie, this book had such a slow star. S slow enough for me to, you know, want to put it down, but then again I really wanted to read it. So it was a it was a bit of a struggle and I'm not completely sure the pacing of it actually took off. Kind of want to say that it was a slow book. Now, that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh it can be, but it doesn't have to be. So what do we have in this book? We have we have love, we have mystery, but Foremost, we have a curse. So we start this book, this story. We started on a quest. These two men, one of them being one of our main characters that we have a point of view from, um, they are looking for this elusive party. Very exclusive, very, no, I don't think it's very exclusive, but to find this party, you kind of have to find clues. And in order to find clues, you, you need clues really. It kind of travels by word of mouth, but not really. You kind of need to find some action. But these, these parties, these very extravagant parties, they are the main thing we have to begin with anyway. So we have our main forester. He's well, he's a poor artist. The only reason he's not really living on the street is because of his friend, I believe his name was Marvin, because he had like a rich uncle or something. So the kind of sharing a flat, as it were. Marvin is looking for the next story, really. He wants to be that, that dude. And so he has this, oh, we need to find this party. We need to find out the mystery behind the whole thing. Ooh. And Forrest uh, very like reluctantly goes along to this party. There is a girl, of course there's a girl. So he sees this girl at this party and he's like, is this the one? He doesn't see her for another year. And then he sees something mysterious. Since we already know it's a Swan Lake retelling, I'm gonna assume you're clever enough to figure out that the girl, she turns into a swan. Mm, yeah, tiny bit spoiler, but also not really if you think about it. After that, he obviously becomes more obsessed with her and has to be near her at all times. He's in love, that's their love story, but will they break the curse or and live happily ever after, or is this curse gonna tear them apart? That's for you to find out. So the other book, Summer Feels. Well, it's Love Me Do by Lindsay Kelk. <laughs> but this gave me so, 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 so many summer vibes. It definitely went from, he's dropping books, definitely went from winter, although we do see like some of the parts of the year, but it's very wintry feely. And then we have, you know, LA where it's basically just sunny all the time more or less so in this one we have Phoebe and Phoebe has come to LA to you know visit her sister who who lives in LA because why not but as soon as she lands she's basically Phoebe's sister Suzanne I'm trying to figure it, remember these names. So Susan is sort of like whisked off to Seattle for work. And she's like, well, you can come with me. And she's like, nah, I'll just stay here. <laughs> what she does, she stays in LA in 
more or less Suzanne's mansion. It has an elevator, it has a pool, it's a mansion. So it doesn't take long for Phoebe to, you know, befriend the neighbourhood as it were, or, you know, the, the closest neighbours anyway. So there is Ren. Ren is kind of renovating his, was it a granddad's house? Um, to be able to sell it because his family wants to sell the house. Uh, and then, <laughs> then there's this, uh, old actress, reti old retired actress, I guess, um, who is, well, a grumpy sourpuss, though those would be words to describe her, but she's, she has a golden heart, okay? She has, she has a heart of gold. <laughs> and then also, like, <laughs> right from the start, Phoebe is more or less accosted by, uh, Suzanne's personal trainer, Belle. Belle was her name. Um, who just lets herself into the house and like, Suzanne, it's time to work out. And Phoebe's like, who the hell are you? Um, Suzanne is in Seattle. I'm her sister. I'm just staying here. It's fine. Um, yeah, so she, she basically befriends everyone. And then Phoebe being who she is, she sort of starts to set up Belle and Wren by writing these love letters. But then, of course, she she figures out that, ooh, maybe she actually has feelings for Wren herself. Yeah, awkward situation there, huh? Yeah. Being a Lindsay Kelk book, you can expect romance because she does write good romance. Not smutty romance, but romance nonetheless. It's fun romance. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she'd, she'd write some smutty romance as well, but that's not what I'm here for. So, romance. Hilarity in form of jokes and just funny characters. These are a mishmash of characters, and it's just... It's the best time, honestly. Um, such a fun, easy read. If you want a bit of, you know, sunlight in your life in this wintry dark times, pick this one up, honestly. It did help me. It did help me think it was not as cold outside as it actually is. Well, help me or trick me. It's the same, isn't it? It's the same. Those are the two reads I wanted to tell you about without, you know, spoiling them, which I tend to do. Oops. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.